so let me let me let me ask this because I think there's a there's a breakdown in um like under the umbrella of what's in a name because we go we have a we have a gi which we call a kimono. You 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 teach an outside trip in your dojo, and you even you, Professor Dreiser, you call it Osotogari. Yeah. Guy drops down into the after the Osotogari, falls into what we call all we can't say Saima because we got Munigatami, Yokoshio Gatami, Kazuya Kesu Gatami, Kesu, all these are side mounts. So they fall down into a Kesu Gatami, all right. And then once we get there, or we get, then we start changing the names. Why don't and I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you for for me and and I don't know if Chadi's like this for me to me you are a you are a judoka that specializes in Nawaza yeah me yeah. who does not know the terms yet and because you're a high level competitor you wouldn't have to know the terms but over a period of time if you bathed yourself inside of the inside of the judo culture you'd automatically know the terms like you know more terms now. Like, you know now that the Ezekiel choke is Sode Garuma Jemei now because you've been around long enough. Um, wh why can't we u utilize these terms, which are the correct terms? I, I think, I mean, I'm not against it. I, I think that the, the lack of terminology, this is something the Tenth Plan tried to correct, and I think they did that right. This is an agreement I have with them. Yes, 100%. They get these goofy names. I, I, I'm again the goofy name is like that doesn't it sounds more like a joke than something serious, but whatever it works it, it's better than nothing, okay. Uh, but I think that 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 hierarchy is or that that structure the naming of things is part of giving the hierarchy structure right is what I'm trying to say, um, and that's yeah. that's pretty no. valid I think that right and even if all names can't be named because I know they're doing variations there's not one Osotogari I know there's not one Harayoshi I know there's not one Uchimata there are there's one that's like <laughs> But there are many, many variations to it. And but at least we have an idea of what we're talking about if you just say Uchimata. Instead, this is how Brazilians describe it. I'm not kidding you. Oh, you know that half guard sweep that so and so did to so and so that one tournament? That's how they describe the move. Instead of naming it, they don't name it. Which is odd because Brazilians are so creative that you would think that they would name all the moves. They never did. The move it was just like it was like arm locky, leggy locky, strangulamento, which is so they had like they had like 10 names for like it's like fifth the vocabulary is like 10 15 words yeah the Kamuda, Kamuda, Kamuda and americana i said what the hell is it i i had when i started doing it i had no idea i didn't know the difference between Kamura and Amer americana to be honest with you to this day i still i don't know which one is which i call and them I'll, both Udigarami. they're Udigarami depending, me. On brazil, depending on where you go in brazil this is americana or this is americana like it's it's not it's not clear either so because it changes from gym to gym. And it changes explain gym. what the hell happened. Because you you came in, you did use the same time as I did. What the hell happened? How do we have this sweep used to be the same sweep for everybody listening? And then it's two different sweeps now. The flower sweep and the pendulum sweep when I was coming out was the same sweep. Yeah. In 1998, the flower sweep and the pendulum sweep were the same sweep. Yeah. When I, I looked on the internet like, <laughs> like a year ago. And I called Lloyd about this. I said, what the hell is going on with the flower? He says, bro, he said, it's changed. You know, the internet has changed the moves. And I say one thing, you know, the term flower sweep and pendulum sweep are not Brazilian. They're American. Americans named those moves. Brazilians never did. Brazilians would describe the move. Army Loki, agarrando por baixo da perna. Describing it. They are like when you grab a guy's leg and sweep. That's how they would describe it. There's no, there's no name. You understand? Mm. And that right there is just, it is symptomatic of the problem. It is a symptom of it. Um, it's, it, I, I think that there's, this is what I would have done. Um, not the position to do that, but like I would have selected statistically. And I think this is a big, big flaw. There are no statistics, or very few statistics. And I would have organized the statistics and we would find out what the center is based on the statistics. What are the most common moves in competition? And we frame it now because th th there's always that thing like, oh, it's too late. It's too late. It's not too late. Do it now. If you couldn't have done it 100 years ago, let's do it now then. Let's, it's on, based on the statistics, what are the most common moves? We're going to call that the center and we're going to name them and we're going to put it in writing. And maybe Jeff is going to create a poster and they're going to send it to every gym that's affiliated to them. And this is the equivalent 
of the in in Juve they call it the the Q1, the Q2, where they have like the I've seen those posters, like they have I can't remember what they're called. And have the equivalent and then name it and send to schools and this is what we're calling. Are people gonna follow? Maybe. Some prob most probably won't, right? Is it too late for it? Maybe, but at least we have something and moving forward, no one can say that we don't have a technical center. And I think that right, it wouldn't be a lot of work. It would not Dr. be Ferguson. Much. Yes. Yes, Sorry. sir. The the um katame no kata. Yes. That could be the foundation for what he's saying. It's I, just structures and it's everything. And it, Bro, and not on, not only that, the self defense portion that that. Kime no kata. Yeah, the self defense portion that the. Oh my god, the self defense portion that the Gracies were teaching. That's uh, like, it's kata. It's the judo kata. Yeah. I, I, can I say something about self defense? Can I say something about it? Because I, and I, I hope I don't disrespect anyone when I say this. Okay, but I'm gonna aspire from the hip because I, how I feel about it. I think self-defense without Randori is useless. I think it, it's, it, I think you, you take out the Randori and I'm like, what are you doing? It's, it's, it's like dancing. It's like folklore. There's nothing, there's nothing real about it. Like that you gotta, was, was the purpose what, of the judo. When, when I tell people like, oh, they should be running a light, right and left hook. Oh, but an old lady can't knock a guy out with the right hand and left hook. I'm like probably, but she's definitely not going to be able to twist his wrist and throw her, a fucking attacker over her hip with an ogoshi. That's definitely not going to happen. Like, you know, so some of, I, I think that self-defense without Randori is just a waste of money. And I'm sorry if I'm offending someone. I promise you it's not personal. Don't take it personally. I am very, very sorry if I come across as disrespectful when I say this. I don't mean to be disrespectful. But I don't see how a move that is coordinated because here's the thing about fighting. Anyone's fought knows this. Fighting is about reacting instinctively on the spot, intelligently. So you have to, like, it's not even thinking. It's just your brain connect that. I think there's a, there's a fiber called myelin. That's like the, it's like yeah, the, the, the brain so inside your muscle. Yes, and it's just, it's just doing that. So when someone grabs your wrist, you're already arm dragging and you're going to the back. You don't even think about it. It's just reflex on reflex on reflex. The better tuned your reflexes are, the more efficient of a fighter you are. I don't think you can develop that without live action. I don't think you can develop it with just like the, the coordinated, you know, if you grab my wrist here, you do that. No, so, so, look so, at so, so here's what people, here's what, here's what I, I, I learned over a period of time too from being in, the, in sport. There's traditional kata. Yeah. And then there's kata. So when you and I, let's say we're going, you know how you, you had that drill when you're going through the person's legs and you come underneath, you're going back side to side through the legs. Okay, at the end of the day, we call that a drill, but what it's actually, it's a kata. It's just not a traditional kata. Like when you yeah. do uchikomi back and forth, and you walk into that, you, it's a kata. It's not a traditional kata. When you're sitting there and doing osoto back and forth and osoto back and forth, it's kata. It's just not a traditional kata. When you practice, you grab my, you grab my lapel, I grab the sleeve, step, tao toshi. That, that's kata, but it's not traditional kata. So you got to yeah. get to the point where you practice and develop proficiency, and then you de 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 develop efficiency through live drilling, and then you can go and move it into randori. But without doing that, with just practicing the move, like okay. when people go into places. No, I, I'm with it. I just want to clarify my stance. I, I think when you're, and this is how I, this is my methodology, right? It's not perfect, but I think it's better than what you know is being taught currently in BBJ gyms. I always introduce a move in a kata format, right? So it's no resistance. And I always like to, it's, it, students get that part quickly. Oh, hand here, foot there. Unless the move is like very like like a bearing bowl is not an easy move for students to grab. But most moves are pretty simple, like a like a key lock. You know, hand here. So then once they get that part, which they normally get in five ten minutes, okay, now we're gonna practice with mild resistance, which is how wrestlers like to drill. Wrestlers, I think wrestlers like they drill intelligently. I really like the way wrestlers train. And we should talk more about wrestling because I think wrestling adds a lot to this equation. Uh, but like it's the resistance that teaches your body how to deal with resistance. That's the key to knowing them. It's not memorizing it. If that were the case, we wouldn't need to train. We just go on YouTube. We need to learn how to deal with resistance. And that, and that, 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 that the, the friction between my attempt and your defense, right? My office and your defense. That's where the learning process takes place. So that right there is that it's the, the 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 border between I am barely able to do a move and I am unable to do the move. That border right there is where learning is taking place. So if my partner is constantly resisting with me and giving me mild levels of resistance, 
I am forced to adapt and improve in the process. And I, I don't, I, when I see people drilling Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a lot of see, I see them stuck in phase one where they're doing the move, but there's like no resistance. And I'm going, man, you got the, the, the coordination down. Let now practice it with movement, practice now, it with that, mild that, that, resistance. That, Professor Drazel, here's the thing judo makes space for somebody to achieve their black belt in that particular area. 